Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today is part two out of five here on the product research in 2022 series. Today we're getting after it, we're getting into it. We are setting up our filters for our product research software. Be sure to stick around to the end so you don't miss anything. I'm gonna try and keep these videos straight to the point, meticulous, refined, elegant. Let's get after it guys. I'll see you in there. We are here. We're in black box Amazon phrases research because we're in the keyword section. What you don't want to do is enter the criteria you're about to do in the product research section. We want to do Amazon phrase research. So little did we know every time we said Amazon product research, we're talking about the wrong thing. It actually makes sense. We're looking for phrase research. So let me just give you a quick rundown of what this tool does. For those of you who have jungle scout and you want to follow along, use opportunity finder. Okay, we're gonna be using this today. Keywords, black box, here we go. This tool gives you a list of product research ideas, phrases that customers are searching and looking for every month. So why would you want that instead of just an ASIN or a specific product that already has sales data? Well, it shows us what the target audience is looking for and what they're interested in. Okay, so we don't have to find a product and reverse engineer the whole process to figure out who our target audience is. We're starting there. We know that's important. Let's just start there in the first place. People are looking for it. We're going to provide a product to them. So first thing you're going to be asked, top left, search volume. So when we go to fill out search volume here, I like to start at a minimum of about 600. And the reason for that is because most of the time you're going to have 10 or 15 phrases that relate to your product or your market. Okay. So you don't need any one of them to have a ton of searches. If collectively 10 different phrases have an average of five to 700 search volume, well, that's 5,000 to 7,000 searches every single month for that product, which is actually quite high. Um, in the low competition area, that's quite high. So we could start there and we'll likely have other ones that are related to it, but if we just find one, that'll lead us to the product and we can find the other ones after. We're gonna max this out at about 10,000. Once you get above 10,000, you start seeing markets that are more competitive and not so beginner friendly. Moving on, monthly revenue. So when you get to monthly revenue, the main thing that you wanna be focused on is selling products that you can afford to sell. The last thing you wanna do is get a product that starts rolling successfully and it needs more inventory than you can possibly ever order on your budget and it goes out of stock and it dies out. It's one thing to fail and everything went wrong, but when it's going right and you couldn't keep up with it, it's in some ways more heartbreaking. So monthly revenue set up at least 3000 or 4000 because this is revenue, this is not profits. So we're at a 25% profit margin there, we're at $1,000 a month of passive income from that product once it's up and running. Um, I think 25% is reasonable after ads and everything. Um, the case study we did last year where I publicly launched some products on a public brand, um, I think we ended up doing about $130,000 in sales and it was about in that range, like 25, 27% profit margins, like $40,000 in profit. So, um, on something like that at a big level, you're generally not going to see these 40% margins, 50% margins. Anyone who tells you that's probably lying. So go with something where 25% of the revenue is going to hit you at that, um, desired passive income. So then we're going to move over to the max range of this. Now, some of you would be like, well, why would you want to max? If I can make more revenue, why wouldn't I? Again, it goes back to that budgeting. So how much can you afford to keep in stock? Well, some of you might not be able to even handle a product that makes more than $12,000 per month. So you might want to cap it there. There's other, uh, other people might be able to handle a product that goes up to $30,000 per month. So you cap it at 22,000 or 27,000, something like that. In this range, we'll just go from 4,000 to 22,000. So we're covering both of those bases. Price is the next one that's super important. Um, minimum price range, you want a, a price that's going to, going to allow for a decent profit margin. Generally, the lower you have to price it, the lower your profit margin is going to be because of your expenses can only get so low. Um, so I like to sell no less than somewhere around that $22.99 range. I'll put that exact number in there and you could structure after that. But if you want to go down to 18, 17, go up to 29 any of that, any, anywhere from about 15 to 30 is good for the low. And then we'll max this off at about 65.99. So we're going up to, by going to 65.99, we're actually capping at 64.99 for the most part. And that's kind of the top end of our budget. Generally, the more expensive a product is, the larger it gets. Now that's a very overgeneralized, but that tends to be the case on Amazon. So we don't want something that's 130 bucks. It's probably gonna be like a dresser or something like that. 
very rarely are you going to get, you know, a French press that is um, $130 or something that's, you know, fits in a box that's a decent Amazon size. Review count. Here's one of the biggest problems that people make is they set the review count to what? A lot of you probably said high. No, too low. Right? Don't set it too low. If I want a market where the average reviews are 75, don't set this to 75. Set this to 350. Okay? Because guess what? Of any market that you find that is good, and we'll be getting into this, a lot of the products that show up won't be the right product. Okay, that's because the, the competition level is lower. So is Amazon just going to show you seven things and leave the rest of the page blank? No, they're going to show you 60 results still, 55 results, whatever it is on page one, but they're not going to all be relevant. And some of those irrelevant results might have 600 or 700 reviews might be in the general space, but it's not the right thing. Guess what? Those still count towards the review count. So generally, the smaller the market gets, the higher you need to put this. Isn't that ironic? Because those really small markets that don't have a lot of sellers have those mixed products in there. A lot of times they're just general recommendations. And guess what? Do general recommendations and general large products get recommended to small markets where they don't know what to put? Or do they put really specific small products with 12 reviews? No, they put the bigger ones because they're proven products that sell well on Amazon. They could list them on things that are just similar to it and they're gonna probably make sales for them. Set that high. 350 is a good place to start. Um, sorry, I put this in the wrong field. We're talking about the minimum here. No, sorry, maximum, maximum. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, cool. So we're gonna zoom out here. I'm gonna go back. Now, categories. Categories is up to you. What do you want your brand to be based around? What I would say is hone in a little bit. If you're going to go home in the kitchen, you want to build a decor brand, don't then start putting sports and outdoors and pet supplies in there. Tools and home improvement, home and kitchen, arts, crafts, and sewing, and kitchen and dining, office products, home office. That's it, right? Hone in on a specific space. I'll be getting into that later. Um, we might do a mini series about branding as well. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. Guys, that's pretty much it. We don't have too much more to fill out here. Okay, there's, there's really not a whole lot that we have to do. So now that we've set up our filters, next thing we're going to be doing in part three is analyzing the ideas that we're getting from the filter set that we set up. So we'll be seeing you in the next part, part three. Come back tomorrow, subscribe down below so you get a notification when it does come out. And we'll be entering this data and we'll be looking through those ideas and creating our list of successful products or potentially successful products. So I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much, guys. Later.